Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Let's get into it. Broncos v. The Warriors, 750 Suncorp Stadium. Mm. Now, before we get into it, Smithy, what yes. are your thoughts about the fact that it will be going on at, I think, like 10 o'clock or 10.50 New Zealand time? Yeah. Um, strange one. Given Well, given we, we – well, and we had to, right, because of the, the time difference in New Zealand last week, um, kickoff time against the Knights, but – yeah, I think I think we should make it more accessible, don't you think? Mm. For people watching home um, in in New Zealand, watching their team go around. Given given the popularity of this football side right now, mm. yeah. like, like when you talk to everyone that, that has, has been over there in recent weeks, like they they are talking everywhere you look. It is it's it's New Zealand Warriors. It's not the All Blacks. Like the All Blacks are currently in the middle of their campaign in the Rugby World Cup over in, in Europe. Now, given that's in Europe and you know some weird times with all the kickoffs and all that sort of stuff for us in the Southern Hemisphere, but they are pe- there are people wearing Warriors gear everywhere. They've got you know up the wires spray painted on their trains and all that sort of stuff, and it's just it's a movement, mate. I, I, what I'm surprised at, and I know look, I know there's reasons. You know, there was um, you know the networks, you know, reportedly like it at a, a later time because of ratings or whatever. But Always, first of all, yeah. I don't know if it would affect it that much. And also, and there's also, I think there's a new a, a Queensland Cup game or a New South Wales Cup game before. There's also NRLW before. But mm-hmm. I guess, and and I think another one is the AFL. The Brisbane Lions have moved their game to five o'clock to not clash with the NRL. Yes. So, first of all, I think we missed the jump there and we should have been the ones to do it. And second mm-hmm. of all, I'm just a bit surprised at the NRL's, um, I guess, their inability to go, okay, well, the Warriors, they're in second week of the finals. They're coming up against the Knights or the um, Raiders. So that's definitely a winnable game. I can't, I'm, I'm a bit surprised they didn't prepare for this potential that the Warriors would yeah. be there. Yeah. That's my biggest, uh, you know, I understand as we get closer to it that things can't just be moved because we've got so much moving on. But surely that, you know, things should have been put in place weeks ago of like, look, if this happens, I'm telling you, it's going to be much better. Because not only is the New Zealand side of things, um, you know, going to be watching a lot of things, but there's a lot of Kiwis in Australia that'll be tuning in to watch um, the game as well. And so it, I don't know if it would matter that much if it moved a couple of hours before, if you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, as far as days are concerned, I think they were always they were always locked into play on the Saturday against Brisbane because Penrith, having finished higher on the ladder, right between between Penrith and Brisbane, because they finished first, they get to play the earlier game leading into the grand final. Mm. So they get the extra day. So that that's why the Broncos couldn't play on a Friday, um, meaning you know the Warriors had to take on Brisbane on a Saturday. But yeah, the, I think there's so many things going on on that particular day, Kempi, which has forced them into playing at this time, which is unfortunate, right, for yeah. everyone back in New Zealand. Mm. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I don't think anyone is going to bed early. Oh, no. They won't be going to bed until the, the final siren of this game between the Warriors and the Broncos, which is going to be huge. I'm going to let you, though, I'm going to let you start your summation of this game, given you've played, given they're playing for the Kemp Cup, and you've, because you've played for both clubs, what are your? Give me your thoughts on this matchup. Oh, mate! I first of all, anyone that thinks that the Broncos are already in the grand final, you're absolutely kidding yourself. This Warrior side absolutely has the ability to beat the Broncos. Now, Broncos are favourites in my mind, um, and I think that if the Broncos play the best they can play, they should win comfortably. But this is finals footy. You don't know how they're going to play. The biggest concern I have with the Broncos, and it's it's actually something that they've disproved and you know week on week out this year. And actually, I think they've gotten better and better at it. But they are a relatively young side, and they would have never experienced this kind of love before from the Bron- Brisbane community, where it's just like you know you're almost gods. Like Reese Walsh is the man, and you're getting compared to the the incredible 2006, and you're getting compared to the the nineties Broncos. And everyone loves you. And I I mean, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I would just say to the group, you know, these same people that absolutely love you are the same people two years ago that were absolutely hounding you. So you've got to remember, this is about you guys. And this is about creating your own legacy and stepping out and, you know, contributing your own greatness to that incredible Broncos jersey. Uh, with, with the Warriors, it's all about, boys, 
we we have proven that we can go with the best teams in the competition. Yep. Everyone is counting us out. Let's go go to Suncorp and do something special. Let's embrace the moment. And I actually w- listened to a, a Sean Johnson uh, interview post the win on the weekend, and that mm-hmm. that's where his rhetoric was. A lot of people are talking about this pressure on our shoulders, and you know we've got the whole con- country. We don't see it like that. We see it as an opportunity, and and sometimes that extra bit of magic it can do some pretty crazy things on a rugby league field. Yeah. Yeah, it can. It can. I'm just I'm just thinking back though, if you take your mind back to round 13, so Brisbane took on the Warriors. Now, this was in the middle of Origin, so they were without all their Origin stars, the Broncos, they went over to New Zealand. They actually played down in, I think it was Napier. Um, they took on the Warriors and they were able to win that game that night, 26-22. Warriors were pretty much full strength. Um, I don't think Wade Egan was playing that night, um, but Metcalf was playing in um, at 5 8th position. So they they had pretty much a full strength side and they were unable to beat this young Bronco side. Did they is that in the back of their minds, Kempi? Is that in the back of the minds of the Warriors players when they come to this game on Saturday night thinking, "Oh, geez, this is going to be hard. We couldn't beat this team without their Origin stars. What's it going to be like tonight?" Mm. Oh, absolutely. You know, I think they're going to be thinking that about. It. I think though if I'm Webster, I'm going, "Boys, Watch this last 20 minutes because if you watch yeah. the last 20 minutes, the, oh, yeah. the I think the, the defending right side for Brisbane Broncos was the full strength defending right side. And the yeah. Warriors absolutely tore us to shreds. And so if I'm trying to look for silver linings and ways to go, boys, okay, yes, they did beat us without their origin stars, but here's their full strength right side. Here's mm-hmm. our full strength left side. We tore them to shreds here. So yeah. there's our opportunity right there. And, you know, like – the edges for Brisbane Broncos have been fantastic this year, but there have been moments where they do sometimes make some wrong calls of jamming in or whatever. And yeah. so that's where I'd be kind of looking for silver linings with the Warriors. But I, as I said, I do believe if the Broncos play the best they can and the Warriors do, then the Broncos should be, you know, win probably by two tries. Yeah. But it's a funny thing when you get this huge momentum behind you. We talk about Parramatta in 2009, just this yep. crazy swell <laughs> and, you know, maybe, just maybe, you know, just maybe it can happen. Yeah. Well, mate, we were talking just before the break about support, right? So they they played in front of a, a, a extremely vocal crowd last week, the Warriors. Um, and when they come to Brisbane, okay, it's not just, it is not just going to be all Broncos. They will have, you know, a, a, a fair percentage of people in the crowd are going to be Warriors supporters. There's no doubt about that um, this Saturday night. So they're not going to be all alone. So what they need to do, again, is very similar mindset to last week against Newcastle, is get away to a good start, give their crowd something to get out of their seat and cheer for, mm. and that may just set them on their way to you know, a really good performance. A, a, a really good performance for the Warriors, I don't think that's going to be too far off a Broncos good performance too. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't... I don't think these two teams are that much different as what we're seeing from the bookies, right? So they're saying, like, Broncos are heavy favourites. Yeah. Heavy favourites. Um, Warriors way outside. But I think their best football is not too different. Although their style of play is very different. Brisbane, the way that Brisbane are playing at the moment is just a power game. Yeah. They play power game from the very beginning with Haas and Carrigan and Flegler. And they're big outside backs. They just, they just, they just outmuscle you. They run over the top of you. They create momentum. They get their key players going for them. Adam Reynolds has got a fantastic kicking game. We all know that has been you know, a great kicker for a long, long time. But um, whereas the Warriors, you know, they, they've got some, you know, big powerful forwards themselves. But yeah. they play, they play a bit more footy, I believe. Yeah. More consistently. More consistently. That when they're at their best, they they move the they move the ball from side to side. They've got great hands. They got great skills. Um, you know, we've mentioned already Adam Fanua Blake and Torhu Harris, one of the two most skillful forwards in in the competition. When you couple that with you know the ability of Sean Johnson um, and Nickel Cox at the bat chiming in as well, they are a dangerous footy side. If you don't get your defensive systems and your decisions right, they can pull you apart. Um, and if they get, if they if they get that early confidence, and they and they get a little bit of a sniff of, well, hang on a minute, like we're a chance. 
they become such a dangerous footy side. Yeah, and a lot of people, you know, talk about the Broncos Ford Park, and rightly so, it's incredible. But, you know, let's do what we did last week, Roosters Storm. Mm-hmm. Payne Haas versus Adam Fenor Blake. Essentially, mm-hmm. you know, I'd have Payne Haas just a little bit ahead, but it's, you know, it's by a millimetre. Then yep. you've got Flegler versus Barnett. Flegler a little bit better, but Barnett's been outstanding this year. You've got mm-hmm. Egan versus Walters. Both players have been, you know, outstanding. I'd actually give probably Egan the, the nod here. Yep. And then yep. you've got um, Neocorde versus Ricky. You know, that's an even battle. Maybe you give it to uh, Murata because he's got more experience, but it's basically an even battle. Mm-hmm. Then you've mm-hmm. got Paddy Carrigan versus Tohu Harris. Basically, yep. you know, as close to even as you can get. And Kurt yep. Catewell, Jack, Jackson Ford. Like, is there that, you know, it's not that much of a difference when you look at it on paper. No, you're right, mate. You're right. But, and particularly up front, you know, that's, that's where you hear it all the time. That's, that's where the game's won. The, the, the backs decide by how much, but the game's won up front. Intriguing battle of the sevens, though. Oh. The two veteran sevens. Mate, like, yeah. And, and just amazing wait. turnaround where, you know, the, well, you know, let's like, talk about Sean Johnson. So he was at the Warriors for a long, long time. They pretty much didn't want him to play there anymore. So he went to the Sharkies. Yeah. And then, you know, probably, you know, most definitely wasn't playing the best football that he's ever played. Um, and then he's gone back to the Warriors and now all of a sudden he's playing some of the best football he's played in his entire career. Mm. The the thing, I don't know if you've seen the comment um, before the match on the weekend, he was interviewed by Jonathan Thurston Kempi and he spoke about, you know, JT said to him, mate, like what's, 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 the, what's been the change? Why, why do you think you're playing so well this year? And he just said, oh, look, you know, I'm happy and settled and... Yeah, you know, we're all at home. Everyone in rugby league world knows, you know, what we've gone through the last couple of years and we're back here and everything's good. But the thing I took away from it, he went on to say, he goes, mate, look, I I understand I'm I'm not, you know, twenty two, twenty three anymore. I don't have that blinding speed that I once had. I don't have that, you know, that big left foot, right foot that used to beat, you know, three or four players on the way to the try line to score a try. You know, he's still got you know, pretty decent speed. There's no doubt about that. And he's still agile, but not what it once was. So he's, he's acknowledged that he's not Sean Johnson of, you know, 10 years ago. Mm. So he's actually, he's actually changed his game and adjusted his game to suit what he has with his physical capabilities now as a, you know, 30 plus year old into, you know, what, what is it? Season 15 or something for him. And, He's doing it a different way. Mm. He's still as effective as he once was, you know, in his younger days. But, you know, he's just doing it a different way. He plays with a lot more tempo in his game now, so he can come onto the ball quite fast. But then he slows up, makes the defence come at him, makes them make their own decision, and then he just he plays whatever whatever he sees on the outside. He's always had a lovely pass in his game, so. Um, that's the thing that's impressed me most about him, and I, I can't wait to see that that battle between those two two players. Now, time for our SEN same league uh, same game multi. So this is the SEN league same game multi. Broncos one to twelve. Reese Walsh, Kurt Cable, anytime try scorers. The total for that is twenty seven seventy five. Wow! Oh, holy! Get amongst it. Get amongst it. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, visit gambling helpline. .org.au. After the breaks, we get to your texts and calls.